Okay, uh, thanks for coming back for our second session. Um, I don't, we're kind of short on time, so I'm going to try to truncate this uh, best I can and uh, leave a few moments for questions as we had before. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this topic we want to talk about tonight is a, this afternoon is a controversial topic among Catholics, not so much among Protestants, although they have their problems with it too and other uh, issues and aspects. But it's an issue that deals with um, is there salvation outside the Catholic Church? Has anybody ever, ever had a discussion about that with a fellow Catholic? Yes, I see. Okay. Well, why, why is this, first of all, a big controversy? Well, um, <clears throat> it's a controversy because it sort of goes without saying in Catholic tradition that the Catholic Church holds the keys to the kingdom of heaven, as Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18 and 19. And, and, and of course, <coughs> along with that is the prerogative to bind and loose, okay? And, and that applies to sins. <clears throat> so the Catholic Church can bind sins, it can lose sins. Um, she has the keys to the kingdom of heaven. I mean, that pretty much says it all, you know. So from those rather succinct passages, you would figure that if there's anybody that has the, uh, the corner on salvation, it's the Catholic Church. And yet... Um, the fact, the historical fact is the Catholic Church has not been here since the dawn of time. Okay, it wasn't there in the Garden of Eden. It wasn't there in the days of Noah. It wasn't there in the time of Israel. It just came 2,000 years ago. Okay, so one question we would have to answer is, well, what do you do with all the people before the Catholic Church? Okay, and once the Catholic Church comes, what about those that haven't heard about the Catholic Church? Okay, because as you know, the Catholic Church started out real small in the first century, and it grew, and it was, it was persecuted for the first three centuries. And then when Constantine came along in uh, 325 AD, then the church became uh, more like a, uh, a legal religion, and it expanded out into various parts of the world until we have today. So the fact, the historical fact is that the church was not known by everybody when it first started. And there, we could safely say that there are people today who still don't know about the Catholic Church, although many people do, because it's easy to turn on the TV or go on the internet and you know find information today. Um, <clears throat> and today we have more people on the surface of the earth than we did in the first century, so um, the, the, the greater amount of people that we have today are taken care of by the fact that we have greater communication for the church to spread her knowledge to people. <clears throat> but still, no matter how you cut it, there is still a remnant of people, a contingent of human beings who have not heard of the Catholic Church, or even if they have heard of the Catholic Church, don't know really all about the Catholic Church, don't know what's required of them, never heard of the Pope or what's required uh, from the Pope or whatever, okay? There is always room for people with ignorance. No matter how perfect the system is on, the, on this earth, it's never gonna be perfect enough where everyone is gonna have sufficient knowledge to be able to say, oh yes, I see what I'm supposed to do, let me go do it, okay? All right, so how did the church deal with this? Does everybody see that problem, okay? <clears throat> If anybody doesn't, let me know. Well, give me a hand and I'll explain it even more detail if I have to. But uh, we have to start out with that foundation because that's where the problem lays. <clears throat> so how does the church deal with this issue? Well, first of all, I think the first thing we should say on this count is that God himself is the one who saves. You know, we often forget that, you know, like in discussions like this, we often come to the point, well, you know, we, we're, we're, if we, we believe in a real strict definition of extra ecclesium nulla salus, which is the Latin definition or, or terminology that we use from Boniface VIII, which translated to English means no salvation outside the church. If you have a real strict belief about that, 
we tend to think that the Catholic Church is the one that saves people, you know? Uh, and that's not true, okay? God is the one who saves people, and he uses the Catholic Church to do that, okay? That's, that's the number one thing we have to settle right off the bat, that, that God himself is ultimately the one who judges the heart of man to determine if he, is, if he was supposed to follow the Catholic Church, yes, granted, if he knew about it, if he deliberately said in his heart, I'm not going to follow even though I know about it, uh, if I knew it halfway and didn't, and didn't uh, decide to do it, if I knew it a quarter of the way and didn't decide, you know, God is the final judge of all that. Okay? Because only God can, can judge the heart of man. It's just a simple fact of life. Okay? The church can't do that. The only time the church says whether someone is in heaven is when? When they canonize a saint. Okay? And we maybe have, what, a thousand of those? How many people have been on earth? Okay? So I mean, the church is sort of stepping back from that and saying, well, we, don't, we can't tell you. We can't judge the heart of man. All we can do is at least get these thousand or so people that we feel uh, the testimony reveals that they lived a good enough life, they had some miracles in their life where heaven testified that, yeah, they, they went to heaven, and from that evidence, we decide, okay, they're in heaven, and we canonize them as saint. And that's basically what canonization of a saint is all about, is saying that this person is now in heaven, and you can pray to this person. You see, in order for you to pray to a person who's dead, 